everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today it's time to crack open the second bag of Echika's 42,000 piece jigsaw puzzle around the world. Yes, I've completed one bag already. I'll leave links down below to all those videos, the unboxing and the three videos from the first bag. So each bag contains 6,000 pieces. I've already done the first 6,000 and as with my beautiful map, it's down at the jigsaw puzzle display at the moment. However, I did remember to grab the last row from that section, which I'll use as the top border. So the first row for this section. Now, while I was there taking these pieces, <laughs> Wendy was with me and we both swear that I dropped one and we couldn't find it. So now I worry that I lost a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. But that's okay, we know my hubby will be able to make a replacement. So hopefully I did not lose a piece, <laughs> but that's on me if there is a piece missing. Now in this section, once again during the time lapse, I'll talk about all the things that appear in the section and I'm hoping to work about 15 hours and then make a video. So with the first bag, it took me three videos. It came out to be 44 hours. So some were 15 hours, 13 hours, you know, here or there, but I'll work for the first 15 hours and make the first video. Most of that will be sorting. What is the section? Well, this is what the section looks like. This is actually part of the panoramic poster that came with the jigsaw puzzle. I did, I've cut it. I think I forgot to mention that during the last bag, but we actually figured out where the sections were cut the panoramic poster and I'm using this as reference because I didn't want the booklet to get worn because it has all the information for the landmarks. And my hubby did try to make reproductions, but the color was off and it just didn't work. So this is the best reference. So I'm chopping up the panoramic poster into seven smaller posters. This has a lot of stonework, which hopefully won't be too difficult to sort and build. But some other things as well. I do think it's mostly United States dominant. There's a few things from South America, but I believe the remaining of the bags will be more for the rest of the world kind of areas. Now, how is the jigsaw puzzle display going? It's going so well. In fact, look, I made the front page of one of our local newspapers here. Everyone has been so supportive. And the other day while I was there on Wednesday with Wendy, we were just there for like maybe two and a half hours and we were setting up to speed puzzle because I was hoping to do a speed puzzle practice. But so many people kept coming and wanting to chat and talk. I didn't end up speed puzzling. In fact, I ended up having to say, oh goodness, I gotta go. <laughs> and it's just been great. People are coming by. They're loving the epic, big, you know, graphica 54,000 piece travel around art, but also looking at all the other styles of jigsaw puzzles and talking, oh, the Crypt Robinsberger, you know, puzzles, or do you like Wasgidge, or do you do these, and what do you think of those? It's just nice to chat with other people that are so into puzzles and what they enjoy doing. And some people have come because they have friends that are into puzzling, so they wanted to take pictures and send them to them because they weren't able to come in person themselves. It's, it's just been wonderful. I can't thank everyone enough for the support and for the team at Wood Solutions for hosting me. It's just been such a joy. And Wendy's been amazing. I was chatting with one group of people. She was chatting with another group. It's just been loads of fun. So I have to do a speed run either tonight or tomorrow. I need to get more practice in. But yeah, so my feelings for starting the second bag, it's a bit overwhelming, I'm not gonna lie, mostly because it's 6,000 pieces. And I know there'll be a lot of sorting and I know there'll be crumbly pieces to start, but I do realize once I get into it, I will enjoy it. Now, I've always said that I don't wanna necessarily speak ill of anyone without getting their opinion on the matter. So just so you know, I did message Educa. I started by saying, I love the image, because I really do, and they have a lot of nice images on their jigsaw puzzles. But I went into, you know, the cut of the puzzle, you know, in the complete grid cut and the crumbliness and how many people commented on my video that, yes, it's their same experience. 
even people saying that they now do not buy Educa puzzles and so they're missing out on sales because of the cut. So I just asked them if they were aware of how crumbly their puzzles were based on the cut, if there you know, were any plans to make changes, did they want input, do they talk to their customers, blah, blah, blah. I got an automated reply that said, we will be in touch within one to three weeks, so within 21 days. On the 20th day, I got another email that said, we forwarded your message to the appropriate department. Once we hear back from them, we will get back in touch. So it's been now, you know, I don't think it's been 30 days, but it's been, well, it's been over 21 days. And so I'm just waiting to hear back from them. I would like to hear their input and their comment. And if it's just, well, whether it's that's how we cut and print our puzzles and it is what it is, or, oh, we had no clue. Um, maybe we should look into different cut patterns. Like, I'm very interested to see what they will respond to me, and I will share it with you all, because that's what I like to do. If I have an issue with something, I try to go to the source. I would have preferred to go to the source before building that first bag, but I was truly caught off guard. And that's maybe my fault for doing such a large puzzle first without doing perhaps a 500 or a thousand piece educa puzzle. I was not expecting it. But now I know what I'm getting myself into. And although I'm feeling a little bit, huh, to start, I know eventually I'll enjoy it. I'll love making the videos. I'll love doing the research and the voiceovers. And, and we'll get there. I know I'll get there. So I actually have to completely change my setup here because this table's not big enough. I've decided that I'm not taping or gluing or mounting this puzzle. So I've bought boards. I need two boards per section. And basically I'm just laying them out on boards and eventually sliding them into next to one another and probably just do a display on the ground outside, use some ladders, <laughs> get up, get some shots from above. But yeah, that's how I'll eventually display it. So I have to move the table, put out the boards, take away my old survey tripod here, and basically I'll use the GoPro again to get like the big wide angle shot of the entire jigsaw puzzle and time lapse. And then I'll use my Canon camera to do more closer ups of the assembly. And probably while I do the sorting, I'll also have little sheets of paper where I can do some building as I go because a lot of the signs with the wording, I'll probably end up trying to build those during the sort because it's quite easy to do at that stage. And I just, I just can't sort without building stuff. It's just how I am. So yes, without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's dive into the second bag of Educa's 42,000 piece around the world jigsaw puzzle. Opening these bags, it always feels so overwhelming to me. 6,000 pieces, it's a lot, but I did it. Now in this video, you're only going to see this angle using my GoPro with the wide angle lens. That's because it's 12 hours and 20 minutes of just sorting. I know I probably could have built a bit more for a few more hours, but I, I was just tired. <laughs> I needed to take a break from it. On those white pieces of cardstock, so they're a bit thicker than white paper, that's where I'm building some of the signs, the butterflies, birds, like this sign here, the National Park Service sign, because then I was able to move those pieces around and slide them into position on the boards better. I don't know why the sorting took me so long. A lot of it are monuments with similar tones of white and gray, off-white, light beige, and so it just took time. The buildings were actually quite easy to sort. Once you kind of familiarize yourself with the pieces in the image, I had very few pieces at the end that I just couldn't decide where to put them. But also I have one large pile of sky at the top there, dark blues, medium blues, and off whites. And then I'm also doing a large pile of stone, what I think is lighter color, beigey color, darker color of stone. Those are gonna take a long time to build in the end. Now US Route 101 is a major route between Los Angeles and San Francisco. So there's an example again of a sign that I built on those white card stocks to then better move them into position. 
I also was building the top of some of the skyscrapers and there's a bit of greenery. It's not too bad. The pile at the end did look kind of big, but it wasn't terrible. I don't know why it just felt like it took me a lot longer to sort this section as opposed to the first section. But then in the end, I don't feel like I have a lot built. So maybe I'm, I was feeling perhaps a little discouraged and that's perhaps why I thought, okay, just stop here, finish off the video, do the voiceover. And then the next video though, I will have both camera angles, this overhead one, as well as my close up one with my Canon when I'm building things. And so you'll be able to see that. I do like the color gradient of the sky that's being formed there at the top. Oh, here's New York. Now I had to look this up because I wanted to know why it was called the Empire State. And many believe that it was called the Empire State because George Washington called New York the seat of the empire because it was named after the British Duke of York. So that was interesting. Also, I thought this was a crocodile, but it's listed as an alligator. And I know there's quite some differences between alligators and crocodiles, but obviously I don't know what they are. I found it funny that the crocodile, like right above them, there's an astronaut and a space shuttle. I love the orangey colors in this section of the jigsaw puzzle. In fact, where I'm standing and I have the poster just right above that are all the kind of brighter orangey colors. I know a lot of that is around the space shuttle, but also in the sky. There is some orangey colors in the sky. There's a rainbow in the sky as well. I can't wait to put the rainbow together. That'll be nice. Oh, I had looked up. I wanted to know how many national parks there were in the United States versus New Zealand because there was that cute little national park sign. And New Zealand has 13 national parks, whereas the United States has 424 national park sites. So quite a large difference. Now you'll see here that that big blob of sky just above it, that's where the big blob of stonework is because there, what is there? There's Mount Rushmore, Lincoln Memorial, Christ the Redeemer, even the Washington Monument Building, very similar colors. Here's some of the birds. They, they always put a lot of detail in the sky, which is nice, it breaks it up. So some various birds that I was able to build as I was sorting. And the one thing that was nice is that um, the Statue of Liberty had a very distinct color. So I was able to sort out those pieces, I think fairly easy, but I do know that I have some missorts. I'm sure I have pieces that I think are in the stonework that probably belong to the Washington Monument and maybe some sky pieces that belong into like Mount Rushmore. So I hope I did fairly well at sorting because then maybe that's the reason why it took me so much longer to get through this part. And oh, I notice in the background, you see the dogs and my hubby. Here's some more signs that I was able to do. Very New York City dominant, you know, Wall Street, Central Park. Um, there's also one of the classic yellow taxis that uh, was part of this section of the jigsaw puzzle. But I just love seeing all these piles come together. It's just starting is, is always so overwhelming. I really wish they would have broken these up into 2000 pieces. Now, don't get me wrong. If I do a large jigsaw puzzle of like 6,000 pieces, I feel pretty good because I know once I'm done sorting, I'm done sorting and then I'll build and I'll have this beautiful, amazing 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. I think this feels just overwhelming is because I know it's only the second bag and I have many more bags to go. I think I'll be more encouraged once I'm at the halfway point. And I was prepared for the crumbliness of the jigsaw puzzle this time around. So I was more careful, but yes, still had difficulty moving things. Oh, there's a big a jumbo jet that's part of the sky. I was able to find quite a few pieces. I think those two pieces I'm missing are probably in the dark section and probably the white piece of the tail probably is either in the sky 
or in the pile of uh, what I think is part rock or monuments. I'm getting close to the bottom of the bag here. I kept having to shift all the piles on the table because it, it just takes up so much room. You don't realize like 6,000 pieces, it's a lot. And these pieces, overall, they're like skinny but tall. So yeah, um, I think would I think this 6,000 piece might be a little bit smaller than say a Ravensburger 6,000 piece. Now, can you tell which monument this is, these little parts that I connected here? Can you figure it out? Leave your comments below, what do you guess? I think, it, I, hope, I think it's recognizable. Now I finished sorting and this is where I have to store all the pieces in sections. And then this is where I pulled out the pieces I brought from the first section. Luckily, I wasn't missing any. But do you know how long it took me to connect these few pieces all together? I had so much trouble with the greenery. I did do the bottom border edge as well, but not the top. I was like, no, nah, I'm not dealing with the blue and the purple. We can do that another time. And here I'm just shifting things around to get them in position on the table. And it just takes a long time. But basically what I've left on the table in piles is what I'm going to build first. And I managed to do quite a bit in this lower corner. I was pretty pleased. But it's really hard to get a really good overall photo of what I completed. But here it is. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!